storms the field, Kansas storms the field. Stay you behind in the stands where you belong. A panel of Louisiana sports experts giving you the hot takes all season long. Michael Cobble, Matt Muscona, and Shay Dixon. This is Sports Takeover. Welcome in everyone on this fine Tuesday night to Sports Takeover. Matt Moscone of After Further Review. Shay Dixon of On3.com, the Bengal Tiger, all your recruiting news. And Michael Cobble here to bring you a half hour of LSU football. And guys, we are coming off of the Heisman moment for Tiger quarterback Jaden Daniels. Something that we probably didn't think we would see this so quickly falling on the heels of Joe Burrow's really ascendancy to the Heisman greatness. But Jaden Daniels has been everything this year and really has been everything for this Tiger football team starting back to last season, and he just has not stopped. The guy has been out of control as far as making big plays with his arm and his legs. Jaden once again doing it, this time against the Florida Gators, rushing 12 times for 234 yards and two touchdowns, throwing 17 of 26 for three scores and 372 yards. Guys, 600 yards of total offense there was very little that he could not do against Florida. The deep ball, the running, as we said, the intermediate game, and really his teammates rising to the occasion to play right there with him, something we're going to talk about. But Coach Brian Kelly talked about the improvements that he's seen in Jaden over the last year and a half. It starts with it was in him. Um, and, and I think he had that upside. And, and it's probably one of the things that we saw in, in wanting him uh, to transfer here is that we saw a player that could be elite, and it was a matter of him having the confidence in himself and, uh, and then the development process needed to take place. So I think all of those things coming together and, and, and then having the confidence in himself uh, to go out and do it, and it's, it certainly has um, been fun to watch. Fun indeed. Fellas, let's get your thoughts on Jaden's game. Shay, we'll start with you again. Just mesmerizing every week now. We're coming to expect it. It was. It felt like 2019 when all those stats would pour out after <laughs> every game of like, they just broke this <laughs> record and this record. Uh, but boy, he has been unbelievable. And Todd Polite's had this uh, and Michael Bonnet up at LSU, but 12,000 career now passing yards over uh, and more than 3,000 rushing yards, the only player in football, college football, to ever do it. Yeah, the first one in college football, FBS history, to go for 300 and 200 in a game. Matt, your thoughts on Jaden? Uh, the definition of elite, you make something that's extraordinary seem commonplace, and Jaden has done that week in, week out, and that's what Joe Burrow did back in 2019. I, I can't believe we're even drawing comparisons to Burrow. Uh, uh, Jaden's <laughs> stats are going to fall short of 5,000 passing yards and 60 touchdowns, but he's probably going to play in three fewer games. If he had yeah. 15 yeah. games, it would be stunning to see what those stats might look like. But he's the best player in college football. He's got an uphill climb to win the Heisman because of Bo Nix. He's going to need somebody to stumble. But he's certainly deserving. He's been the most electrifying and, and most outstanding player in the, in the country. And we'll talk about the Heisman candidacy in a little bit. But let's talk, uh, continue to talk about Jaden and what he's been able to do since arriving on campus. Coach Kelly met with the media yesterday and talked about really since day one here on campus, being approachable for Jaden has been the key to everything. He's never been a guy that has built a bubble around himself. He has been a guy that has, you know, I think made himself available to uh, everybody on the team, whether it's an offensive player or a defensive player. And I, I think that, you know, when somebody comes in and transfers in, um, you know, their guard is up. His, his has always been one where, you know, he's been approachable. Uh, he's always been somebody that has reached out to others on our football team. And, and I just think that's made our, our entire team embrace him uh, because he's been so readily available to everybody on our team, not just the offensive players, but the defensive players. And his demeanor, his personality, you see him smiling on the sideline all the time. That's the way he is, whether he's in meetings or whether he's in the football building, he has that personality and I think it's infectious. Matt, you kind of alluded to it, but really makes everyone better, I think, is the thing that Jaden is doing at the highest level, really. And, you know, is one of the things that I wanted to talk about after the game was just everything clicking for this team. The running backs, you know, a threat. The blocking downfield from the wide receivers, elite. 
you know, everybody, those deep shots, the receivers separation, everything is there for this team. The tight end getting involved. It's really been the key, and Jaden's been the guy that's making it all work. But all of those 11 pieces playing together has been impressive. What's impressed you? We're going to talk about the deep ball in a minute, but what's impressed you about Jaden's game outside of that? I mean, it's certainly his ability to throw the deep ball. You're right. I think more than anything, it's the recognition of when to stay in the pocket and, and when to take off and run. We know that his ability to run is so dynamic. I mean, even on the 85-yarder, the it looked like around the 10-yard line when he wobbled back inside, it almost looked like he slowed, but the defender didn't catch him. I mean, it's just he's effortless with the way that he can he can use his legs, which is so fun to watch. I thought it was great the, the way that he used his blocking there to fade away from the defender, and the same thing on another one of those long runs. He just did kind of fade out of bounds to avoid the hit. Coach Kelly was asked, what has he seen from Jaden to make the biggest leap from last year to this year? It was a pretty obvious answer for him. The deep ball you know, pushing the ball down the field with accuracy. You know, I think we all watch games and, and watch the quarterback, as I call it, ice the puck, you know, throw it out of bounds, not not have a chance to make a catch. Um, he's been so good at, at the deep ball and, you know, being able to, to hook up on those big plays. I think, you know, one of the things that we do, in fact, lead the country in is plays over 20 yards, plays of 20 plus, 87 of them. Um, and, and that has to do with certainly runs after the catch, which we're prolific in, but the ability to throw the football down the field would be one. I would say two was in the pocket progressions. Um, I think that that is equally as impressive in terms of his development. Jay, uh, Coach Kelly talked about the plus plays and 19 more than Michael Penix Jr., one of the guys that Jane's in the Heisman run for. What do you love about those shots? Uh, it's what everybody said was missing from his game a year ago. He was very conservative with the football and looked up. It was smart for the time, right? But I think he also came here knowing he was in a quarterback battle with Garrett Nussmeyer. He was on a new team. He didn't want to do something to mess up and lose the job, and he's on the bench. So... A year ago, conservative. Now he's been around this team. He's been around the receivers. He lets it fly, and we're seeing a lot of video right now resurface from the Arizona State days. That freshman year, he was chunking it downfield all year long to Brandon Ayuk, NFL yeah. player, um, a couple years ago to Ricky Pearsall. Yeah. A couple, you had a great video, uh, who's now obviously at Florida, put up 100 on LSU's defense. ASU had some guys. He was slinging it to them. Who it's hasn't not. put up 100 yards in LSU <laughs> defense? Come true. on. It's great to watch. It's a great point. The, but the I mean, ASU yeah. fans in my mentions talk about what could have been kind of like <laughs> with, with Jets and Chase, and we had them here with the, with Joe, no doubt but about it. But, yeah, it's the, it's, the deep, it's the ability to now say I'm not afraid to make mistakes. I'll throw the ball down the field. And I think he has realized you can't out overthrow Brian Thomas. Man. You, we'll just go get it. They are going to go get it, no doubt about it. And the other thing that I think is as impressive is his willingness to stay in the pocket, but then to understand when the play breaks down, it's time to use my legs. And his vision downfield is the one thing that really separates him from great running quarterbacks, I think. The other thing is that he's managed to stay healthy. I asked Coach Brian Kelly yesterday, what makes Jaden so elusive? I mean, we've, we've talked about this in, in, in – with our strength and conditioning team, you know, his his training and the way he trains, I mean, I know he does not look like he's strong, but he is sinewy strong. I mean, he his fiber in terms of uh, how strong he is, uh, is amazing. I'm trying to be more smart when I run, but, um, you know, there's times where I'm, I'm able to, you know, squeak through somebody, you know, we call it split two, um, be able to split two, you know, uh, get a couple more yards or potentially scores. Uh, his fast twitch, um, all the things that um, require uh, elite athletes to be, he has all those things, and our strength team just marvels at the way he works out. And and you're seeing that come to you know light in the way he plays. Uh, guys have a hard time wrapping him up. And there might be some questions about his durability, you know, at the next level, but certainly we're going to enjoy him for the next couple of games that he plays here inside Tiger Stadium. All right, when we come back, we're going to talk about that Heisman candidacy and Coach Brian Kelly going back to his uh, political days. That's next after the break. Sports Takeover will return after these messages. Now, back to Sports Takeover. Welcome back to Sports Takeover, everyone. Something that I did not think we would be doing so quickly is making plans to head to New York City early December. The Heisman candidacy is here once again. The last time we did this was back in 2019, but Matt, before that, 
20 or 1959 with Billy Cannon. I mean, 60 year span there that we're stretching and almost immediately on Joe Burrow's heels, we're having a chance to do it all over again. Coach Brian Kelly talked about LSU now developing a trend with this, something probably most of us never thought we'd see. You know, it opens up just the fact that, you know, player development and the ability to uh, compete for the Heisman Trophy exists at LSU because it's not only right now, but it happened a few years ago uh, with another LSU quarterback. So now you're starting to build not an accident, uh, but a trend here uh, at LSU. So um, that obviously speaks to recruiting and the ability to recruit um, elite quarterbacks to LSU. Fellas, we're in the salad days of LSU quarterbacks, right? Never. Yeah, well, it's hilarious. I mean, we the LSU was a quarterback graveyard for a decade under Les Miles. Plus, and, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it and it absolutely does matter. I mean, look at the perception around Oklahoma: Jason White, 03, Sam Bradford, 08. You had uh, Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray go back to back in 17 and 18. I guess you can kind of Hurts. throw a little. Yeah, you kind of throw. <laughs> well, Hurts was a finalist, and then uh, I mean, Caleb Williams, of course, who transferred to SC and won it there, but was at Oklahoma. I mean, Oklahoma's built that reputation. Yeah. I mean, LSU is building that reputation right now, and it's justified. Let's take a look at some of the odds to watch as we kind of push towards the finish line. Here. Hey, now, look at that. Bo Nix, that's right. Uh, and these really changed, you know, over the course from Sunday to yesterday. Yeah. Jaden was fourth on this list, I think, at plus 550, and now he's second at plus 320. Bo Nix really, I do feel, is, is the best competition for Jaden moving forward. Fellas, your thoughts on just the odds and how it'll play out? Well, Bo Nix and Penix will play each other again, uh, probably. For a title, isn't that right? Yes. So, uh, but that is also I've seen before that a lot of Heisman voters get their votes in before championship weekend. So how much does that really weigh on it when Jaden's not playing? The other thing to keep in mind as well is um, Bonix does have to play the Civil War against Oregon, Oregon State. State, and Oregon State plays Washington this week in Corvallis. Correct. So there's a chance Oregon State, like if you're an LSU fan, you're a big Oregon State fan right now as well because they can disrupt that whole list. Oregon State opened his favorites in that game. It's already shifted to I'm, I'm not surprised. Oregon State at Reeser Stadium, which is weird because it's a dumpy little 30,000-seat stadium. Like, nobody wins there. They, they've won, like, 20 of their last 21. It's kind of crazy. All right. We talked with Coach Kelly yesterday about campaigning for his man, and, and he's been a high hope high-profile coach who's had this opportunity over the years to really campaign for Heisman candidates. And I asked him, is it something that you do deftly with a soft hand, or do you bring out the hammer and swing it as often as possible? You know, I used to be low-key about it, to be quite frank with you. But when, when you have the opportunity today, I, I think you have to be able to talk about your players when, when they're doing something that's so special, and in particular what, what Jaden's doing. I think it's my responsibility when I have this opportunity in front of the media to talk about something that I haven't seen happen in my three plus decades uh, as a head football coach, somebody that has developed and has excelled at an elite level. And um, he's an exciting football player. I think he's the most exciting football player individually in the country. And I think it's my responsibility to talk about it. Couldn't agree with him more, guys. I think when you have that opportunity, you have to say it as loud and as often as possible. He is the best player in the country. I know LSU is rolling out the media campaign. You're already starting to see some of the social stuff pick up, and you're seeing it take root as well across the nation. And, Matt, to your point, and, Shay, you even alluded to it, guys, voting early. You have to get the talking heads in college football talking about your guy. They're doing that after this Florida performance. Uh, yeah, he could, will join a 3K, 1K club, 3,000 pass, 1,000 rush. That includes, I'll give you the names, Vince Young, Manziel, Deshaun Watson, Lamar Jackson did it twice, Kyler Murray, and Hurts. Those are all finalists, more than half of them winners. Yeah. No reason he's not in New York, and with those numbers, very good chance to win it, given those other guys on that list do not have anywhere close to it. The only thing, aside from Bo Nix working against Jaden right now also, is he won't have the stage for the next two weeks. Yeah. You're going to play Georgia State, and then you're going to play Texas A&M at 11 o'clock in the morning. And yes, that game follows college game day on ESPN, but it's also opposite Michigan-Ohio State, which everyone in the country is going to be watching. Jaden basically made his case Saturday against Florida, and that's kind of it. Yeah. Not a championship weekend to, to shine in as well. When we come back, we're going to talk about Jaden's teammates, help get him to this point in his career. That's after this. Sports Takeover will return after these messages.
Now, back to Sports Takeover. No, I'd be hard-pressed to, to think of a quarterback that has made the kind of leap that he has made to where now you, you know, you're, you're looking at somebody that is clearly a, a, a front-runner for the Heisman Trophy, and, and I don't know that I've had somebody make that kind of jump. With a little help from his friends, Jaden Daniels is certainly making leaps and bounds as he leaps and bounds down the field. Jaden, all the talk of college football this week, but Coach Brian Kelly started his postgame press conference talking about a couple of his teammates doing the dirty work, the unselfish work. And I think that's the most interesting thing to me, guys, is when you look at that Florida game, you really look at a total team effort of guys doing their part, their 111 as they're kind of resurrected. That was the Nick Saban thing back mm. on defense in the early days. But his receivers blocking downfield. Josh Williams running downfield to make that extra block to get him an extra five yards. And look at Malik Neighbors here at the top yeah, of the screen. Two guys. Brian Thomas at the bottom of the screen. And then the pursuit from Brian. That was Kyron Lacey. And then the pursuit from, from Brian to get downfield to finish this off and give Jaden that opportunity to get look, into this the. Is, this is two right here. <laughs> Just get you two. You Boom. Pick, uh. Picks them both off. And then you see the acceleration. But, but really, it's that total team effort to finish there from Brian Thomas. And go on Twitter and watch, uh, you know, Josh Williams finishing block on Brian Thomas's last touchdown. It's been impressive, no doubt about it, to see this Tiger team really pitch in and help their their player get down the field, finish those touchdowns off, and make the difference. Coach Kelly talked about it. I think you just have to look towards uh, some of the key plays in the game, and in particular the long runs. You don't run down the field uh, unless you have others that are committed to making sure that that occurs. And, you know, we all talk about the offensive line, and they've been outstanding. But you have to have receivers that are committed to that as well, and, and running backs. Um, the one you're talking about in particular with Josh was the edge block that he made on their defensive end to free up Malik Neighbors um, on on the uh, the flip, you know, uh, what we call our, our speed sweep. So. Yeah, you're getting it from a number of different players that are, that are setting up a, an unselfishness, you know, on our football team, and in particular on the offensive side of the ball. It's it's what it takes to have winning football, and we're seeing it. Brian Thomas has been great blocking all year. Malik has stepped up. Kyron Lacey, we've seen. Josh Williams, unbelievable. That's why they trust those guys. They're three down backs. They can block in situations like that. And this O line's been really good all year. They have. I mean, there have been little patches where you're inconsistent. But it's nothing where you're shuffling rotation and you have to find a new guy. They've trusted their five. They've rolled with it. Charles Turner, yeah. SEC Offensive Lineman of the Week. It's great to uh, see. So, yeah, everybody is kind of pitched in here. Now if we can just find some on defense. When we come back, we're going to talk about that. Shay will talk a little recruiting as LSU heads in the final stretch of their season. Sports Takeover will return after these messages. Now, back to Sports Takeover. Welcome back, everyone. Matt Moscone, Shay Dixon, Michael Cobble coming down the uh, lane here as we wrap things up. And let's talk about LSU on the recruiting trail. Keelan Moses inside Tiger Stadium meeting with there Coach Brian is. Kelly pregame. Talk to Keelan on the sideline. He's got his announcement coming up here at the end of the month, Shay. Uh, November 30th. Uh, look, Nick Brissett, another you uh, high guy <laughs> in the background there. On now on Incidentally, LSU that's staff. how big Keelan was at eight years old. That's right. Um, but yes, Keelan. Unlike his brother, Dylan, uh, I do think we'll end up at LSU. November 30th, U High Gym. Uh, he'll have, obviously, a number of hats on the table, but feeling good about the Tigers. Yeah, when that I saw hug, that, are you kidding me? Said, when I saw that embrace. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that was one of those coach, it's not y'all, but <laughs> come in for the real thing. When I uh, saw that embrace, I was like, oh, I feel pretty good here. Cameras <laughs> are on, make it look good. <laughs> you know, Coach Kelly talked to Shea yesterday about building this thing back, and once again, he reiterated that they are going to do it through the high school ranks. You know, really selective in terms of the needs uh, for our program. Um, as I've said, and I've made this very clear, uh, we want to build it with freshmen. So this freshman class is going to be a large freshman class, and we want to build it there first and foremost. But there are areas that we want to be able to top off with some premier players. And, you know, obviously, if, if look, if you're looking at the wide receiver position, if we went into the portal there, you have to match it up with a guy like Malik Neighbors, you know, if he ever went early. Uh, I don't think he would. Well, <laughs> obviously we'll find out. But, you know, if it's a guy like that, right? You know, you, you have to look at the talent that you have in your program and measure it accordingly. 
Brian Kelly with dad jokes for days. A little, little, little soft. In uh, print, that reads very <laughs> different than it looks. Exactly. You be careful that's, with that. That's why I left him on camera and made sure I didn't cover <laughs> that part up. But uh, you definitely have to have that. Shay, it's what you've been talking yeah, about he's all right. along, though. And they're going to take close to 30 high school kids, and they're going to take five or six portal additions. And he uses the Malik thing. But think about it. If Keon Coleman wasn't on FSU, is LSU in a tight game there? If Trey Harris, who's from Como, isn't on Ole Miss, they win that game. No doubt about it. He, that was who tore them apart at the end mm -hmm. and scored the final winning touchdown. So in the portal, if you can get it right with game changers, that can swing games for you. We've seen it. LSU could be 9-1 and one right now if it weren't for two Louisiana receivers on two other rosters. Yeah, and we could look at the other side of the ball and see two misses where they really – hurt themselves as well in the second Malik Neighbors game. is going to go pro, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and go on <laughs> this record. This just in. I'm going to go on record with that one. Just my All guess. Right. Yeah. Gut feel. Thanks a lot for joining us. Matt Muscotti, you can find him every afternoon on 104.5, 104.9. Shay Dixon on 3.com, the Bengal Tiger. Thanks for joining us. The Tigers in Georgia State, Saturday night in Death Valley. Have a great evening.